Hey guys, it's Maxine. Thank you so much for watching. So today's video, I'm going to be doing a blonde balayage on my client. And this is the first time I'm doing highlights or any type of color on this client. And her before color right now is still very pretty, like the tone's very pretty. But when it comes to the balayage, we definitely want to brighten up these ends. And you can see her root grew out a bit. Like you can see there's like a line of where her roots grew out. So we definitely want to erase that. We want to give her more of like that balayage feel for when it grows out. Um, like, you know, it grows out more seamless and stuff like that. So we're going to give her a balayage. And even though we are going to be blonding these roots up a bit, I'm going to be doing like a color melt or shadow root to get rid of this like line to where you could see her roots are growing out and stuff like that. So yeah, we're going to be doing a blonde balayage on my client today and a color melt, giving her more of like that seamless grow out and stuff like that. So definitely stay tuned. Um, don't forget to follow me on my YouTube channel if you want to see more color videos in the future and definitely turn on the bell for post notifications so that you always know whenever I post a new video. Follow me on Instagram. It's at Maxine Glynn and I always post all of my formulas in like the written out form on all of my posts and I already posted her hair so it's on my account right now so definitely go check that out. And also I did want to point out that throughout this video the lighting kind of changes a bit. It's because my new camera has like this cool feature on it that blurs the background and I did try this video for the very first time with this cool feature that blurs the background and honestly I'm probably never going to do it again for another hair video. I think it'd be kind of cool for like um, like more of like a photo shoot or a video shoot type of video for the blurring the background but it just didn't work out with these hair videos because it just changed the lighting too much and it didn't allow me to focus on the hair it wanted to focus on the face and stuff like that so just you know a disclaimer the lighting is going to change throughout the video a little bit so I'm so sorry if that's super annoying I still wanted to post this video though because I know that this color could be helpful for a lot of people so just keep in mind that the lighting throughout the video will change and like I said I'm sorry if that's annoying I'm definitely not going to use that feature for any more hair videos in the future but I just wanted to point that out but yeah, so if you wanted to see me freshen up my client's color and give her a nice, beautiful blonde balayage, more of like a beigey, ashy tone, and I'm going to be doing a color melt, like I said, and giving her like that seamless shadow root so that it grows out really nice like a balayage does, you know? Yeah, so if you want to see me do this blonde balayage, then definitely keep watching. So the first thing that I do is I'll part my client's hair and this client likes to part her hair in the middle or she'll go either way with it so we're going to be sectioning in the middle for this client. I section off the sides of her hair and I go from like where the crown is to behind the ear I just draw a straight line down and then I section off the sides to get them out of the way for now because the very first section that I start painting with my balayages is the back of the head and it's going to be the nape. So the very first section I always start at the nape and I do this because whenever like my client's done processing with the back section because this is the very first piece that I'm going to be painting so this is the very first piece that finishes being processed first and then if I need to rinse this out I can just lay the client comfortably in the sink and you know just rinse out the sections that are already done processing if the sides still need more time to sit and stuff like that but I mixed up Matrix Light Master with 20 volume and I used 20 volume to do her balayage because her natural color is pretty light already it's like a light brown dark blonde so it's definitely going to lift up pretty nice and easy and I'm definitely painting the ends of her hair even though they're already blonde I still want to bump some of this gold out of her hair so I'm painting this lightener on to the ends and I don't need anything too crazy strong because obviously her ends are already blonde and we want to keep her hair as nice and healthy as possible she wants to keep her hair nice and long we're actually not cutting it for this appointment because we had cut her hair a couple weeks before this balayage so yeah I just want to keep everything nice and healthy but this is the first section that I'm working on and I always like to saturate the ends first with my balayages I just feel like I can do them a lot quicker this way so 
So I take my section and I saturate like halfway down the strand and I completely get all of that saturated with the lightener. And then I paint like a V section. So with the lightener I did on the right and on the left. So I made like a V shape. And now I'm just back combing with my color brush just to give it like that feathered look so that it definitely helps with the blending. So and once I finish my section and I've feathered all of this up and blended it out, I always go and lift up the section and then I start feathering the underneath as well in the same exact shape, kind of like mirroring the top. So I'll do the V and I'll definitely feather out the V section. And I never like skip this step because this is what really helps your balayages come out nice and seamless and so that you don't ever have any like weird, you know, blotches of color and things like that. And then after I do that, I check the very top, I make sure everything looks good, and then I'll put a foil underneath this section. But after I, you know, feather up the underneath, then I will go back and just make sure the top looks good and kind of just fix any little splotches that happened from when I lifted the piece up and then brought it back down, you know, because the way that balayage is, is like whatever the lightener looks like on the hair, that's how it's going to lighten. So you want to make sure everything looks nice and smooth. And then I'll take a foil and I'll like lay the piece into the foil and I'll fold all the ends up and kind of stick it to the foil. And then this is the part where I'll wipe my hands off and then I don't always show me wiping my hands off but I'll always wipe off my hands now and then I'll layer over a nice clean foil and wiping off your hands is important too because you don't ever want there to be like a bunch of lightener outside of the foil because that's just how it's going to end up being really messy and I only want the lightener on the pieces of hair that I want it to be on I don't want it to be like touching all these pieces that I'm going to be leaving out so yeah and then I do one big section for my next section. I'll section it all out, like I'll part it down the middle of the head like this. And then I'm taking like an inch section. So now I can split this in half. So each slice that I'm taking for my balayage is about a half inch. I want it to be like thin enough so you can kind of see through the strand because when you take a thinner section, you definitely have more control with how much it's gonna lift. And I definitely want her to get as light as possible. And so if I took too thick of a strand, it might not lift as well. So I definitely, and then if it's too thin, it just kind of disappears into the hair. Like I wanted it to be a little bit chunkier so that you can kind of see the dimension nice. So, you know, a half inch is pretty safe bet, you know. And yeah, so I'm just applying this section the exact same way. I'm saturating halfway down the strand and then I'm applying the V shape. And then after I put the V shape onto the section, I'll go back and I'll feather up with my color brush. And then, yeah, so I'm basically just gonna be repeating this exact same pattern all the way up the rest of the head. And definitely always remember to go underneath the section and feather that part out too, because that's super important. And then I'm just going to be layering all of this into foils and I just like to use foils for my balayages unless they're like extremely blonde already and using foils is going to almost lighten it too much or something like that. But in most cases, like if you use foils, I feel like you have more like heat control and then it just gives you the opportunity to have more control with how light they get and stuff like that. So I like to use foils for my balayages. Um, and then as you can see here, like the very first section that I applied at the nape, I only needed to do one section going down. But as I'm parting up the head, the sections get wider. So then I'll take two sections next to each other like this. So right now I just did the left side and I'm going to be the next section. I'm going to be doing the right side. So then I'll have two like balayage pieces or slices next to each other. And then that will be the exact same pattern I'll use going all the way up to the head until I get to the crown. And then the crown will just be the one section again, just like the nape, because then it starts to get less wide. And yeah, you can only, you only have to do one section section but going like up the whole entire back of the head it's going to be two sections next to each other and as you can see I'm leaving about a half inch of hair out in between each balayage slice so that's going to help keep the dimension in her hair um, if she if the client doesn't want any dimension and they just want like all of the ends to be completely blonde and they don't want to see the dimension then you can just balayage every single piece of hair but you have to also keep in mind that that's going to take double the amount of time it's going to be extra product so you have to charge more for it and stuff like that but in most cases like keeping the dimension 
in between each balayage slice actually helps this grow out even more seamless because it's not going to be as rooty it's definitely going to have a lot of her natural still in between all of the sections but that's also going to make the blonde like balayage pieces pop more so when blonde is sitting ne when a blonde like strand is sitting next to a darker strand you're going to see the highlight more rather than like if everything's blonde on top of blonde like the highlights don't stand out as much so a lot of times it's nicer to have you know some of their natural still in the hair so that you can really see like those bl blonde balayage pieces pop more but yeah it's definitely going to help this grow out a lot more seamless so when it grows out it's not going to be like as rooty it's just going to grow out nice and natural kind of like how the sun would naturally lighten the hair that's like what balayage usually is supposed to be like a very naturally lightened by the sun type of color and so like when you leave a lot of the natural in between the balayage slices then it's just going to grow out much more natural but yeah, so when I'm done with the balayage slice, I'll layer the nice clean foil over the top. And sometimes you can like fold the foils in, like you can bend them in so that they don't really shift a lot and stuff like that. Um, if you don't want the foils to be slipping out, sometimes folding the foil really does help. But I had a lot of product on her slice, so you know, I think the foils like just stuck together pretty nice. So I didn't fold them. And plus it does save you a couple of seconds of time per foil, which adds up to a couple of minutes at the end of your balayage application. So yeah, just, you know, FYI, definitely fold up the foils if you feel like you're worried about them slipping, but in some cases you don't really have to. But yeah, so as I'm getting to the top of the head, I'm getting closer to the crown and I'm doing this exact same pattern, two foils next to each other, same exact V pattern and, you know, feathering this up. And like I said, when I get to the crown, it's definitely a smaller, less wide section. So then I can just do the one section going back, which would give like that V pattern, but going back down the back of her head. So like whenever you see like a balayage that has that halo effect, kind of like where it's really blonde in the front at the face frame. And then as it gets to the back of the head, it starts to get darker and darker or the roots in the back of the head gets like longer and longer. You'll get that like halo effect if you create just one big v section going down the back section because like you'll only have the blonde on each side and in the middle part you'll keep more of the dark so yeah it definitely creates that halo effect so i'm going to speed this part up now so you don't have to watch me paint the same piece over and over again <laughs> so i'm going to like time lapse it and just so you know that's not real time like once i speed it up i'm definitely like if only i could you know balayage that fast but yeah i'm going to speed it up now and i'll stop and i'll slow it down when i get to like that crown section and like I said, I don't always show it, but when I'm moving away from the camera like this, I'm most likely wiping off my hands with a towel so that I don't have like lightener all over my hands in between, you know, these balayage sections. So just wanted to point that out. <laughs> Also, I mentioned it in other videos, like a bunch of other videos, but I just wanted to point out that when you're balayaging long hair, if you want to make it a little bit easier on yourself, you can see like I've saturated all of the ends of this one slice, but then I folded all of the ends up into my hand. So I literally folded them up and I'm holding them like a big chunk in my hand because that just really helps like the ends not kind of be like flopping around the whole time as you're trying to paint and feather and all that. Like with long hair, you definitely don't want like the ends flopping all around with lightener on them because that can get kind of messy so for the most part I really do like to fold them up and hold them in my hand to get them out of the way so they're not just like flopping all around but yeah <laughs> that's like a good trick you know to make it a little bit easier when you're doing long really long hair Okay, so now this is the crown section and I'm just going to be taking like a half inch chunk and going all the way down the back with this and just painting this the exact same way, doing the V section. And on this client, she wanted it to be more blonde at the root. So I'm definitely going kind of high up with my V section and I'm making sure to feather up the lightener like pretty close to her root. In other like clients, sometimes they want an even stronger halo effect and they want it to be really dark throughout the back and stuff like that. So check out like my other videos and you can see like certain clients with that halo effect. It'll be d even darker going down the back. But this client wanted kind of like a halo effect. She definitely wanted it to be blonde and a nice blonde face frame. But also she wanted the roots to be super blonde. So I'm going pretty close up to her roots. Yeah. So I'm just pointing that out. Um, that's how all the clients are custom and 
you know, with the lightener, how you apply it, how close to the root you're going, and the formulas you use for the color melt, how far, how far down you drag the root formula for the color melt down, you know what I mean? Like, there's just, like, a lot of different ways you can do it, and it really, based on each client, it totally depends, and really, like, it does depend on what picture they show you. I like when my clients show me pictures. It gives me a nice idea of, like, what they're picturing, you know? So, yeah, just you can go off, like, based on what the picture they show you. I think the pictures my client was showing me was very, like, blonde at the root and everything. So, yeah, so you still get that halo effect where it's, like, not, you know, super blonde all the way at the root. It's only blonde on the sides and then in the middle. It's nice and dark right in the middle. So that's what the halo effect is. And like I said, on some clients, this halo effect will go as far down with the dark as like the occipital bone on the back of the head. That's pretty far down. But like in her case, we're going pretty close to the root. And here we go with the lighting change. Like I said, sorry if that gets kind of annoying. The lighting's going to change a bit. <laughs> but I did take the blurring feature off. But still, like, the lighting just kind of got screwed up for this video. So, see, it, like, literally changed before our eyes. <laughs> but, yeah, I just wanted to point that out. So, you guys know I know the lighting sucks. But that's okay. <laughs> it happens. But, anyway, I went ahead and I already balayaged the left side of the head. And I did this because you really can't see it very well in the camera angle anyway. So, I just went ahead and did it but this is the camera angle that's much better and I left like a little slice out right above her ear but I took most of the slice above her ear and I definitely including a lot of the like where the hairline is in this slice so I kind of took it on like a little bit of an angle but adding like the whole entire hairline is super important just add it right into the slice but I'm still balayaging this piece exactly the same way as I did all the other ones a very like high root V section you know and feathering up the face frame like this really really helps like that face frame just come out nice and like soft and natural and bold at the same time like I feel like balayage is so funny like you can have such a bold piece in the front like which is actually what we're gonna end up doing for her color like she really wanted that really bold almost like color block bang chunk in the front and I do have a video for like an actual crazy color block bang so if you want to check that out I'll link it below and but yeah, I was saying like balayage can be really funny like that. Like you can have a really bold piece in the front like as a face frame, but it still could be like super soft and like seamless. You know what I mean? Like especially with when you feather it with the lightener, but then when you do the color melt, like it softens everything. So even though you can see how chunky I'm making like the very front, I'm still doing the V shape, but I'm making it like as chunky as I can. And then I'm bringing up the roots a bit, you know, so that it's definitely still nice and blonde at the root. But yeah, balayage is funny like that. Like it could be super bold and chunky, but also really nice and blended and seamless unless you really want it to not be blended and seamless. Like the video that I'm linking below which is like that color block bang that is not seamless at all like it is super color blocky um, but like in a lot of cases you can still have a really nice bold chunky face frame but still it be seamless so that's kind of like what this client is today. And yeah, so I'm like I said, I'm repeating the same exact pattern all the way up the head and kind of leaving out like an inch section, but then splitting that in half. So I'm taking a half inch for each balayage slice. And yeah, just following the same pattern all the way up the head. I'm going to time lapse it again just so that you guys can like see what I'm doing and get like a general idea of how I apply the side. And like, you know what I mean? Like this is a really important section. This is the this is the side that they see in the mirror. They'll see the front and the side like more than the back even, you know what I mean? But I don't want to make you guys watch me 
paint the same piece over and over again <laughs> so I'll slow it down when I get to like the very top like the very front face frame where and and like just keep in mind that I am trying to do this chunkier than I would normally do a client I'll always do a little bit of a bolder face frame just because a lot of times when I go in after and do the color melt it, the color melt kind of erases the boldness a lot but in this client's case we definitely wanted it to be bold and we didn't want to erase any boldness so I might even go in a little bit stronger with the face frame than I usually would but yeah I'm going to speed it up now and I'll slow it down when I get to the very front but I still wanted to show even though I'm repeating the same pattern over and over again I still wanted to show it because I definitely think it's a good idea to like give you guys an idea of what it's supposed to look like like the other day I was watching YouTube videos and I, you know, just clicked on one of the videos that was in my recommended feed and it was like somebody who did hair and they didn't show like the whole side section. Like the first section they showed was like the back and they were painting the balayage and then the next time, like the next clip, it was like the rest of it was totally done and foiled already. And it's like, I just remember like when I was learning, that would have totally confused me. I, you know, I was always really like, oh, I, I wonder how they do the side or the top or the front you know because that's the part where the client like really sees anyway and so I was always like that totally would have confused me for them to not show it so that's why it's like even though you're watching me paint this over and over again I feel like just if you're kind of learning techniques and stuff like that and you want to get like a nice idea of how you're supposed to paint and apply the foils and the sections just yeah just giving like an idea so that's why I'm still concluding it in these videos so hopefully it helps you guys um you know get like a better idea of what it's supposed to look like just by me showing it even though I'm speeding it up but yeah <laughs> I wanted to include it anyway I also want to mention that the way that I do my videos is more of like a podcast style. That's why I talk throughout the whole video and I kind of just really like to like explain in detail like what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and stuff like that because I just feel like really like detailed explanation always helps me and stuff like that so hopefully it could help you guys. I feel like there's a lot to know about hair and even there's a lot of different scenarios and stuff so yeah I just feel like a podcast style could help more. Yeah, so hopefully it's helpful for you guys and also like throughout the video, I'll definitely just try to add as much information as I can in and like any tips or tricks that come to mind in the moment and stuff. So hopefully it's helpful for you guys, but yeah, let me know if it is. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it, <laughs> if you like these type of videos and like podcast style and stuff like that, or just comment down below that you like it. I would appreciate it.
as I'm getting up to the very top of the head, the section does start to get wider. So a lot of times what I like to do is I like to put a horizontal foil at the very root area of the section that I just applied and foiled because that just helps the lightener not bleed out of the foil. And also it helps me not have to like split this into two, you know what I mean? So I'll just do like the one slice on the side of the head and yeah, I don't have to split it into two. And you can't really do this like, I mean, you can do this in the back, but it's a bit wider in the back. The side on the very top isn't as wide. So yeah, so I, I kind of like make this work more for the side and you can split this into twos also if it's too big of a section. A lot of times I will split it into two if I want it to be like even more stripy or something like less, you know, natural. Uh, like I'll split it into two on purpose just so that I make sure the stripes come out nice and bold. But for, for this case, for this client, I really just wanted like that very front face frame to be the most bold. So I just kept it in the one slice and the horizontal foil underneath and on the top just helps the lightener not bleed out. So that's a little tip that I have so that also not splitting it into two saves you some time, like just keeping the one section together. Right now I'm working on the very last slice on the very top of the head. This is the last piece. We're all done after this. And yeah, I'm making it super bold right now in the very front face frame, but keeping this into just one very big chunk just helps to kind of save time. So one chunk doesn't have to be two, you know, <laughs> but yeah, we're almost done applying the lightener and I'm going to let her sit for like 15 minutes. Then I'm going to rinse out the back and then I'm going to let it sit for 15 minutes again and rinse out the side and let it sit, you know what I mean? Kind of just making sure to check the foil and you know, once it's like that pale yellow that it kind of looks like the inside of a banana peel, then you know that it's ready to come down. And a lot of times I'll pop my client under heat and let them process for like 10 minutes or so, but heat's a little bit controversial in the hair world and it's a little bit tricky, but I think heat could be like a very good tool if it's used with caution. So just definitely always use it with caution. And maybe when you're just starting out, don't use heat at all you know what I mean? But I just feel like if you are just very, very cautious with using heat, like only use it for certain clients and maybe check it after five minutes, stuff like that, because you don't want to damage anybody's hair. But I definitely think it's necessary to kind of bump them past these like warm colors a lot of times or even like a dark yellow color, just kind of bumping them past these warm colors. I think heat's, you know, very comes in handy, you know, but so I'll do that a lot. But yeah, if you're just learning, definitely use a lot of caution and don't just like leave your client under heat for a while or anything like that. You know, de decide if they're the type of client that can even go under uh, under heat because sometimes their hair is too fragile or something like that, you know. But if their hair is pretty strong, check it after five minutes. Uh, you know, if I know my client has pretty strong hair, I'll usually check it after like 10 minutes. But yeah, so the very back section is has already been sitting and has been lightening for a while. So I'm going to rinse that first and then the sides need to sit for longer, you know, especially the side that I'm working on right now. Like this is literally just going into the foil now. So this is going to need at least another, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes type of thing. So yeah, just check your foils. Some clients lift super fast and it only needs to sit for like 15 minutes. Some clients take a little longer and needs to sit for longer. Sometimes, like I said, I'll pop them under heat for five or 10 minutes and it kind of just bumps them right to that level that I want. So it's totally, it depends on the client, you know, but yeah, just, you know, watch the, watch the foils, open them up, check them, always have a timer set so that you never have to worry about you know, like the timing, like I'll always keep my timer on my phone and I'll keep it on me at all times. So even if I walk away from my client for like a second, I'll always, always have their time with me. So now I'm done applying her balayage and I wanted to check the very back section and it's definitely lightening super super nice but you can see at the very root it's definitely still warm there's still like a lot of that gold present and so I'm putting the foil back on because I definitely wanted to process more you know the color melt can save you a lot of times when it comes to like bumping out that darker root where the gold is but you also you know want it to lift to that perfect level too so I'm definitely going to let it sit for a little longer 
and I'm putting a foil on the very top where her part is because I'm gonna pop her under the dryer and I don't want any of like the air from the heat like going into the foil and drying any lightener out so I'm just putting this foil over so that nothing gets dried out you know like I don't want any because the air like the dryer is actually right behind us like you could see it in the camera but the air comes out of that vent and you don't want it to be like working its way down the foil because that's going to dry out your lightener so I'm just clipping the foil into place and I'm going to pop her into the dryer for about 10 minutes and then check it and then rinse the back and then another 10 minutes under heat and then I'm going to rinse the side so this clip right here is after I had rinsed the side and the now this side the right side is all ready to come down so this is the last section and I'm just showing what it's supposed to look like when it's like all done so it definitely looks like the inside of a banana peel except for the very very root part that still has a little bit of gold left but you can just tell her her natural is not going to really bump much farther than that because I did use like that feathering technique and a lot of times when you feather up like that it doesn't lighten it as much at the root because that's where you feathered it but that's where the color melt is going to come in and the color melt's always a darker level like that root color the root formula is always darker so that's just going to bump all of that gold out so yeah but it was all ready to come down there and yeah so now I'm just towel drying it I did shampoo um all of the lightener out of the hair that's a question I get like did I shampoo it yes of course I always shampoo lightener out of the hair 100% shampoo it condition it and then I bring her back to my station and I towel dry it and I comb it all out and I always tell them like don't worry this is the crazy in between stage it's going to look yellow and stripy and crazy and don't worry I know <laughs> that it looks crazy <laughs> but yeah so this color melt formula is going to soften everything and you can see like the color block bang here it's super soft and seamless because there's a lot of blonde behind it but it's also still super bold and color blocky you know but I also don't want this to disappear here into the balayage either so I'm kind of sectioning this out of the way because I want it to definitely stay very color blocky even though it's like a softer color block but still I didn't want it to get like lost in the rest of the balayage anyway so the color that I'm mixing for her color melt which is the same thing as a toner and a glaze and a glossing that's all the same exact thing but the color melt is just two different formulas so there's a formula for the root which is darker and a formula for the ends and the root formula is I mixed up matrix color sink which is a demi permanent and I did one ounce of 9v which is violet and the violet's going to cancel all of the yellow and then a quarter of 9n which is neutral and that's just going to give it like that sandy kind of look so that it's a little bit sandier and beigeier and it's not too like icy because if it was just violet if I just applied violet it would be very icy which is really really pretty but she didn't really want to be like a platinum color you know she wanted it to be still natural so adding that neutral in is just going to sand it out a little bit and make it more beigey so that that's why I did that and the level 9 is lighter than her natural color obviously but it's definitely darker than what I'm going to apply on the ends so it's giving her that like shadow root that's super subtle not like a dark color melt you know it's just giving it more of like a like a color melt but more of like a subtle color melt and I'm dragging that down about an inch in the back and in the very front of the color block bang only about like a a half inch like I really only want to touch the root there in the very front but in the rest of it you know I could drag it down like about an inch and you know it's just going to give you that's the halo effect there too dragging the color melt the darker root formula down in the back more is going to give you even more of that halo effect so yeah but that's the root formula and I'm just going to go around the entire head and I'm using a foil on the top here just so that as I'm like painting on this root formula, it doesn't like overlap and get onto pieces on the other side of the head that I don't really want it to get on. Like it just gives me a little bit more control with where I want this color to go. So just one foil there is really helping keep it all neat and everything. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint this root formula all over. And then on the very front hairline, I'm, that's going to be the very last piece. Usually, if you watch my other balayage videos, I'll just go in on the face frame right away and I'll just kind of angle it down towards that halo effect. Like I'll put it on a half inch and drag it down farther in the back and just naturally it will like kind of drag down farther in the back and it just gives you like that halo naturally. But even though that would have happened in this case also, 
I definitely didn't want to accidentally erase this like strong color block bang because she really wanted this. So I just, for extra caution, you know, I just blocked it out of the way, you know, and I'm going to be painting it in a second. And again with the halo effect dragging this down in the back even farther than I did on the sides so on the sides I dragged it down an inch and on the back I'm gonna drag it down even more like two inches like even closer to the occipital bone because it's also a level nine also like I want her blonde to stay as close to the root as possible but I did you know put this formula for her roots i did make it a level nine so it's really not going to darken it that much and we did still want that nice halo because that's just going to help it grow out nice and seamless so yeah dragging it down farther in the back is totally fine okay so now i completely applied all of the roots and now i'm going to go back into this you know big blocked out bang and i'm going to apply it about a half inch at the root and I really try to be like super, super neat about it because when you apply color at the root, it always wants to work its way down farther than you even wanted it to. So yeah, just be really careful. And if you're working on like roots like this, just be careful not to drag it down too far because like when you part it and flip the piece and all that, it's just going to even come down even farther than you intended most of the time. But yeah, and you can see like the root part is a little bit more yellow than the rest or more gold and stuff so it's good that we went a little bit darker on the root formula because it's really gonna you know cut through all of this yellow that's left over and stuff like that so yeah So the formula that I'm using for the ends is again Matrix Color Sync Demi Permanent. Color Sync in Matrix is always a Demi Permanent, but I want to point that out because I get a lot of questions if I'm using a Demi or a Semi or whatever. So yes, it's a Demi, but I definitely want to keep her ends like as light as possible and her ends lifted to like a really, really pretty like level 10, you know, so I definitely don't want to darken it. I want to keep it a 10 as much as possible so I'm making like I made a level 11 and that's basically like when you take a level 10 and mix it with clear to dilute it so I did an ounce of 10 V which is violet which is what's going to cancel all of the yellow and I mixed that with an ounce of clear which basically made 11 V and I always like to go a little bit lighter with my formulas so I'm using 11 V on her ends because I don't want this to darken it if I would have used a 10 V and put this on her ends it would have darkened it closer to a 9 on her ends and so like that's what I mean I don't want to darken her ends so I'm using like a whole level lighter than what my goal is so if my goal is a 10 then I'm going to use an 11 as her formula so yeah I know it's a lot to remember but don't forget to follow my Instagram too like all of the formulas are written out on my Instagram I write it all out in written form and just find the post of what her hair is and you'll see it all written out but 
But yeah, also that's why I mix up a lot of colors. She has like tons of hair. So I used an ounce of 10V, an ounce of clear, which makes two ounces of 11V. And then I also mixed it with a half ounce of 10 neutral, which is N, which is going to give you like give us like that sandy color, which is the same thing that I did on her root. And then I also mixed that with a half ounce of clear. So I made like an ounce of 11N. And so all together, that's three ounces of color. She has tons of hair. And so I'm going to mix that with 10 volume. So three ounces of 10 volume. And yeah, I'm just going to be melting those two colors together. I definitely apply this ends formula on the ends first and I saturate all the ends first and then I definitely will go back into like where the two colors will mix each other so right now I'm applying it to the ends and then like I said after I apply and get it all saturated I'll go back in and where the root color meets the ends color I'll purposely mix those two together that's where the color melt comes in because the level 9 mixing with the level 11 in that little section there is going to kind of create like a little level 10 there so that's really going to help it you're going to get that like nice fade from dark to light and that's that color melt vibe you know but yeah that's just how it's all done and i did leave out this color block bang in the front and this formula i'm going to put on her very bang part in the front because I definitely wanted you know I didn't want that to get dark so I wanted to apply all of this color first and leave that for the end so that I had much more control over how light or dark it got like if I would have put the very front face frame uh, if I would have put that you know first with the formula if I would have put the toner on the very front first and then kind of worked it through the rest then it probably would have ended up needing to come off already or you know what I mean like it would have maybe got too dark so to give yourself more control definitely leave out any pieces that you definitely want to keep light so I definitely wanted to keep this front part light enough and this gives me a little bit more control to be able to watch it and take it off when it's actually ready. Like, like I said, like rather than, oops, it got too dark and then you're kind of screwed, you know what I mean? So put the rest of it on, let it all sit, and then I'm going back in and putting the ends formula on this and doing the exact same thing. I'm color melting those two colors together, but it's definitely like closer to the root in this case because the root formula is like only a half inch down. So I'm color melting very close to the root. And yeah, I'm going to let this toner glaze glossing color melt. It's all the same thing. Remember, <laughs> I'm going to let it sit on for like 10 minutes and then it's going to all be done. But the roots, you know, I definitely, like I said, can keep this as light as possible by applying this color after the rest. Because if I would have applied this first, then it would have sat on already for like 10 minutes while I finished applying the rest of the color. So this way, it's really, truly only sitting for 10 minutes. You know, like if I walk away from her, I'll say, okay, I have your timer with me. It'll just be a couple of minutes. Then this front part will truly only have sat as much as I wanted it to like if I would have just wanted it to sit on for five minutes or ten minutes but it's like the back of it has already been sitting on and processing and stuff like that so even if I set this client's timer for 10 minutes technically the rest of it has already been processing for like then 20 minutes you know what I mean so like it's a little bit tricky when it comes to timing but you will get more control by like leaving this color off of pieces that you definitely wanted to be like super light you know This is what it looks like when the color melt is processing. You can see all of the harshness has basically gone away. All the yellow has gone away. It's so fun to see the glaze work like right before your eyes like that. Like you can see this color melt. All of the lines have disappeared. There's no harshness. 
like all the yellow is gone so I just really love this part because you can really see it like you know transform for your eyes and all that and you can see like that sandy color is coming out and it just looks kind of icy at the same time but yeah and then the roots are darker so this is you know you can already tell you can see through the color but yeah so I let this sit on for like 10 minutes and then I took her to the sink I completely washed her I conditioned her I rinsed her out really really well and now she's back at my station and like I said before we had already cut her hair a week a couple weeks ago so I'm just going right in and blow drying and I like to shake it all dry like mostly dry like 85% at least and then I'll go in and style it with the brush but when it comes to like big fun colors like this I really always love like I love the whole process I love coloring it and all that like I love the whole thing but I really really do love like the big final reveal <laughs> like at the end you know so I'll definitely go in and like blow dry the very front first like the face frame and the very top of the hair because I just want to see it already like I'm so excited to see what this looks like and all you know how it comes together and stuff and I know the clients like are usually really ready by now to see what this looks like so I really love blow drying the very front and top first you get to see it right away you get the big reveal right away and then you know you can just have fun styling the rest of the hair and then when you're styling the rest of the hair you already know you love it so you don't have to worry about oh I hope she loves it or anything like that you know what I mean like get that out of the way just I like to style it all first get the big reveal and then yeah it's just fun to see that you love it right away <laughs> And another reason why it's good to blow dry the front first, you're also in a way checking the color, making sure everything looks good. So if you do need to tweak it or do some kind of a, you know, darker formula, like if it's not light, if it's not like dark enough or if it's still kind of yellowy or whatever, you know, majority of the time, like I'd say 99% of the time, literally, like it always works out. But for that case that doesn't you know what I mean like if you wanted to tweak it at all you didn't do the entire style you know you didn't go ahead and blow dry the entire thing so it's kind of like it gives you the opportunity to just tweak it really fast in the sink on wet hair without actually having to have gone through all of the trouble of styling it and everything you know but yeah I really like to show my client right away what it looks like and like I like to see it right away too it in this case it's kind of fun to see like the color black bang you can see it it's definitely bolder in the front and yeah I also like to point out that the way that like I do the lightener and the glazing you can wear your hair straight it doesn't have to be curled I always like to add like that beach wave in just for fun for pictures and it does bring out the shine and everything but this seamless like balayage it's definitely so seamless that you can wear it straight and you don't have to worry about curling it so you know I like to point out like oh you can wear your hair straight doesn't matter or you can curl it for fun whatever but even wearing it straight it's so so pretty and she can let this grow out and it's just going to grow out nice and seamless and and natural and everything and I always suggest like to my clients I point out that it's super important to like buy a color treated shampoo from the salon so like you know leave with one and everything because color treated shampoos are so important to guarantee your color like you definitely want to buy them from a licensed place also like so that it can guarantee it because it literally takes only one shampoo of something that you're not supposed to shampoo your hair with to like mess up the whole color and everything it really will wash out your color or like turn it to like some weird shade and everything like that and so you want to recommend your client to buy a color treated shampoo from a licensed place so from the salon that you work in or you know a beauty supply store like Ulta or something that's licensed because if they just go to some like random beauty aisle in a store it's not like a, it's not legally sold to those places like I don't want to mention the you know companies or whatever but like just random beauty aisles and stores it's not like legally sold there they're not like licensed distributors so it's definitely like you can buy you can accidentally buy a product even though it's a professional brand like these brands don't want their products to end up in stores like this you know because even though it's a professional brand it could be watered down it could be expired like it's not it's not legally sold there so you definitely want to buy your shampoo from licensed places and always tell your client how important it is for them to get the shampoo from you know like your salon and stuff like that because the detergent in the shampoo can definitely wash your color out it's like a make or a break thing you know <laughs> But anyway, I definitely like to add these beach waves in and now I'm breaking it up with like a nice serum and it looks so pretty on her hair. So I'm turning her around. I'm kind of showing her or right now I'm showing you guys, but I'll show her in a second with a mirror. A lot of times I like to show them what it looks like in this light that we just worked on it in. And yeah, it looks so, so pretty with this natural wave. And now I'm going to take her over to like my photo shoot, video shoot area with like the ring light and the backdrop so that we can get really nice, cool pictures and videos. 
all right guys this is the final color all complete thank you so much for watching this whole video i really appreciate it definitely leave me a comment down below letting me know if you made it this far into the video because if you made it this far into the video you're freaking awesome and you're real ones and love you guys <laughs> but definitely give this video a nice thumbs up if you like it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel especially if you guys want to see more color videos or haircut videos in the future because i have tons of videos to edit and i'm posting more soon and yeah oh my god we absolutely love how this color came out it's so so pretty and it looks so good on her she has tons of hair but we love this like seamless like color block bang it's like super soft but it's so nice and fun to see like that big bold chunk in the front you know but also how seamless and soft it is with the rest of it so yeah we absolutely love how this came out and yeah like I said don't forget to follow me on YouTube and subscribe to my channel and also turn the bell on for post notifications so that you're always notified every time I upload a new video like I said I have tons of videos coming I have so many to edit so I have lots of different color videos to come and also definitely follow me on my Instagram. It's at Maxine Glynn. And I always post all of my written out formulas on my posts on my Instagram. Like everything's written out because I know, you know, ranting on about all these different formulas can get a little bit confusing. So I want to write them out for you guys. So you can see that all written out like that. And you can use it as a tool when you're doing your clients and stuff like that. So yeah, definitely follow my Instagram for that. And definitely share this video with anybody that you think it can help. If you feel like you know somebody that this could help, definitely share it because I would appreciate that. And yeah, I hope this helped you guys. I hope you guys got a lot out of this video and you got tons of information out of it. I really do try to put like as much of my, you know, info in as possible because, you know, I really want this these videos to help you guys, you know, when you're working on like real life situations and stuff. So yeah, definitely give this video a big thumbs up if it helped you guys and I hope it did and yeah <laughs> but all right guys that's it for today's video thank you so much for watching I really appreciate it and I will see you guys in my next video bye oh, oh, oh. so give me so give me your all I'll take it I'll take it tomorrow